So this year is the 60th anniversary of the Rolex Daytona. And if I was asked simply, what is your favorite watch model of all time? And you can only pick one. My honest answer would be the Rolex Daytona. And that may seem an obvious cliche choice for a watch that's become so hyped, so hard to get hold of, and so overinflated in the secondary market. But it's my honest answer, as it's a watch I've personally loved for over 30 of those years since I first saw it in the late 80s, looking longingly in a boutique window at something I couldn't afford. In this video, I'm going to cover my favorite Daytona models right now, as well as over time with a history of diverse and fun variety of models from the Paul Newman to the Daytona Beach and Rainbow Editions. I hope you enjoy this and please click like and subscribe. So I'm going to start with my favorites today, then go back through time. And my favorite today that I've been waitlisted on for over a year is this, the Rolex Daytona meteorite dial in white gold with the Oyster Flex strap. Beautiful dial, literally out of this world. And I love it in the white gold, paired with the comfort of the Oyster Flex bracelet. This is my ultimate grail watch. My other favorites today are the yellow gold and green dial made famous by John Mayer in this, his second appearance on Talking Watches in 2019. Stunningly beautiful dial, and I got to try it on recently. I love it, although I don't think I can personally carry this one off as it's a little bit too bling for me, but aesthetically, it is beautiful. A little more toned down, but even more exclusive, and with the added heft, is this, the beautiful Platinum Daytona with the ice blue dial. Another one I've admired for years, though this isn't one I've had the chance to see in person. The other Oyster Flex pairings for me are these, and I like how the Oyster Flex pairs down the yellow and rose gold, so it's not too gaudy and over the top. And lastly, but certainly not least, are the stainless steel models with the black dial, which I've also been waitlisted on, but expecting to get later this year, and the Panda. I love both of these. Marginally, I prefer the black dial, only because it has a bit more of a vintage feel, and also is more reminiscent for me of that first watch I saw back in the 80s. So looking back now, at the interesting history of Daytona, which is sumptuously lined with what are now some of the most iconic vintage watches of all time. Thank you to Hadinki for their great content and I've leveraged that for photos of some of these rarer vintage models. So Rolex released the Oyster Chronograph, reference 6034, back in 1950, 73 years ago, that's three years, before the first Submariner and Explorer, and four years ahead of the GMT Master. This 6234 from 1955 served as Rolex's mainstay chronograph up until 1961, when the 6238 represented a significant redesign with greater focus on legibility. And just a year later, we have the iconic and possibly most famous model of all, reference 6239. It's where we officially have the birth of Daytona 60 years ago, not in a manger in Jerusalem, but with Rolex becoming sponsor of the 24-hour motor race at Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida. And Rolex intermittently included the Daytona branding in red on its Cosmograph model. The 6239 is also famously now named the Paul Newman Daytona. Joanne Woodford purchased this watch for her husband at Tiffany. Given this watch was ideal for timing laps, it perfectly complemented her husband's love for car racing. The watch's case back was lovingly engraved with the phrase, drive carefully me. Only two to 3,000 of the 6239 were produced and for a very short period of time. Following a 12 minute bidding war, opening with a phone bid of 10 million, the original Paul Newman Rolex Oyster Cosmograph Daytona, that's a mouthful, was sold at a New York auction house in a packed room of more than 700 people for a record price 
of nearly 18 million dollars in 2017. Going back though, most Paul Newman Daytona models feature red accents on the outer portion of the dial and some have the large Daytona text above six o'clock which features in a number of the other models. Moving forward in the 70s, there were the 6263 and 6265 models, and in 84, the first solid gold versions, with both brilliant cut diamonds in the 6269 and baguette diamonds for the 6270, typically 80s, but with low production numbers, they're worth more than a million dollars each today and also feature in John Mayer's impressive collection and really are a precursor to the Rolex Rainbow Daytona. Jumping to the late 1980s, you have the 16520 and it's this watch I first saw in a boutique window when I wanted one ever since. And 30 years on, I'm still waiting. Under the hood, Rolex also switched in the 80s from mechanical to automatic movement. They reached out to Zenith for their El Primero movement, which was the finest of its time. And it was many years later that Rolex developed their own in-house model, replacing half of the components and making nearly 200 modifications, including a free-sprung balance before having it tested for chronometer certification. Hence, a lot of these late 80 models have colloquially be branded the Zenith Daytonas. The Zenith Daytona range was also the first to feature two-tone examples, which were amongst the models that you still see today. 23 years ago in 2000 was that milestone of the first fully in-house automatic Daytona with the reference 116520. But in the early 2000s, this also saw some of my favorite other Rolex models, the fun and colorful Rolex Daytona Beat. My only chance of purchasing one of these, given that they go for nearly $100,000, is if this video hits over 100 million views. And that would probably take everyone sharing it with over a thousand people that they know and making sure that they like subscribing and sharing it on. So unlikely, but I can only hope. 2013 featured the Platinum Daytona with a blue dial and brand ceramic bezel. And that brings us nearly up to date in 2016, where we have reference 116500, both with white and black dial and a black cerochrome bezel. And these are kind of the modern version of the 6263 black dial Daytona, and about as close as you get to a Panda dial Paul Newman Daytona in the white variation. Ceramic was a callback to that acrylic bezels of old, but was more scratch resistant. But this is also the moment in history when Daytona shifted from being highly desirable with a long wait list to basically almost unobtainable for most of us, myself included, though over a year in a wait list, I am naively optimistic. So happy 60th anniversary to the Rolex Daytona. And I would love for you to visit me this year so we can celebrate in person. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do click like and subscribe check out other content I have on this channel, and I'd love to hear your comments. Which is your favorite Rolex Daytona model?